Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Leo. If Leo is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so... We have the Seven of Swords tonight, which has everything to do with futility. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Okay, so we have that seven of swords energy and usually the seven of swords is some kind of deception, um, lies, maybe, um, you know, things are, things are kind of falling apart, uh, if, the truth has been revealed or not, right? It's just not working out. Um, or, you know, continuing to put your energies into something that obviously is not going to work. Okay, so we have... We have the dog right up here. We have the star, we have the dog. We have what looks like, it looks like an angel right here. You can see the wings and the body, the head. And it looks like a cake, right? But it looks like it's kind of falling apart. Now we are getting pretty close to Leo season. It will be here in what, a month and a half, a month, I guess, a month and a half. I don't even know. Like a month and a half. Yeah. I'm like, what day is it? I don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just into June now. <laughs> yeah, get it together, Lenore. Uh, I look at my calendar 50 times a day, so I should know. Uh, okay, so we have the dog. We have the star. I Immediately, I think of Sirius, right? Um, but I also feel like this is a... There's a goal here, right? There's a goal that you have been dedicated to. You have spent a lot of time um, focused on. You, I just think you put, you put your whole heart into it, basically. This is one of those big, like, dreams of your life. And that's why we have that star card energy there. Uh, now we have this angelic force, okay, um, and I feel like this is kind of the voice of reason coming into your life, okay? And I feel like there... How should I say this? I feel like there's interference happening, um, but I feel like it's something that is not overt. Um, I feel like somebody in your life Somebody close to you, maybe family, this seems like it could be a family thing, um, really cheering you on to do kind of the, whatever the thing is that you want to do. Now, maybe this is like your schooling or your job, your career. Maybe you're wanting to have another child or your first child. Um, maybe you want to move somewhere. I don't know. Whatever it is, right? Uh Family member, family, spouse, partner, friends, whoever it is, really trying to like support you, be positive, um, at least outward facing. And I feel like behind the scenes, like in not just even what they're thinking, I feel that like they're actively working against whatever it is that you want to do. Not because and I don't think it's because they're like, you know, opposition. Um, I don't feel like it's nefarious necessarily, but I do feel like, 
I don't, it's like, it's like maybe even in their mind, they're trying to help you. Um, but there could be jealousy there. There could be like this idea of like, uh, I want you to do well, but not too well. I don't want you to do better than me. Right. If they consciously understand that or not, but I do feel like they're really throwing a wrench in there and it's kind of, I think it mostly through talk, right? I feel like you do something, you start to get some traction with it. You start to feel pretty good about it. And they're like, yay, good job. This is awesome. And then they go running to, you know, the people in your life and they're saying the opposite. Can you believe that they're doing this? This is such a waste of time, such a waste of money. Um, it's never going to go anywhere. You know, this kind of thing. And I feel like that energy is so devastating. It, it absolutely, if you say it out like to the person or not, the energy is there. So I think that this is really, um, this is that seven of swords energy. Okay. Um, now if you, if this is something that, you know, you should be pursuing or not, I don't know. You know, I have no idea what it is, but I do know that there's somebody in your life who is a naysayer. And I don't think that it's necessarily like they're, you know, some villain, but I do think there needs to be a conversation had because I know that you already know who I'm talking about. You're not somebody who is so naive that you don't know uh, what people are doing or when they're fronting, right? So, um, yeah. I definitely think that this is a time where yeah, you go and you have the conversation and you say like, what's going on here? Like, you know, uh, I'm trying to do this thing and I have a feeling that, you know, whatever, uh, do it tactfully though, Leo, <laughs> don't get wild with it. Um, now we have this birthday cake. Okay. So I do feel like something around your birthday coming up. Uh, it looks kind of messy. Okay. I think it will be emotional. I even think that it will be kind of a, something switching inside of you. Um, Leo, you are just like this. It's like, you could be all about that life. And then the moment you see or feel or whatever, you see somebody's like true colors or, or something about them just is, it leaves you with a bad feeling that switch will, it will just go so fast. And so I feel around this time, yeah, there's going to be some changes happening, especially emotionally. I feel like this is where you're kind of like, all right, well, this is not for me, sir. <laughs> not, not for me. I'm not, I'm not interested anymore. Um, so yeah, look out for that. I don't know if that's related to the first situation or not, um, but it does feel important. Definitely important. Okay. So we have a mother figure. We have a person on top. I feel that you're very close to your mother. Um, if that is in reality or if it's, you know, kind of this, uh, if it's like, maybe she was not necessarily, uh, emotionally available, or maybe she didn't really talk to you openly about things. Um, but there's still a profound love there and a closeness. Uh, no matter what, I feel like, you know, you're very dedicated to your mother. Um, what does she have? So I almost feel like I almost feel like there's like this thing of like poking the beehive. Now we have another animal over here that looks like it, maybe a bird hanging off of it, but poking at it. 
maybe causing maybe mom causes a little drama I don't know maybe maybe your mom is kind of like uh you know interfering with your relationships I kind of almost immediately was like is your mom the mother-in-law that like we all avoid in life right um I don't know. <laughs> maybe she inserts herself into situations that maybe aren't for her. Um, but I do feel like, yeah, you're devoted to her though, right? Um, there's, a, there's a real understanding between the two of you. Uh, now I'm looking over here. And it's like a celebration. We have a person standing here. They're holding something. It looks like it has confetti coming out of it. Now we have a face right here. We also have a face right here. Eyes, nose, kind of a frown. We have a goat and we have a heart. So really, uh, wow. So I think... <laughs> I think what it comes down to is there's kind of a mother figure in your life. Maybe it's not your actual mother, but it's a mother figure. You're devoted to her. Um, but I think she really does stir the pot. I think she pokes the, you know, the little beehive a little too much, gets everything kind of worked up. Um, and then is like MIA, right? Left for you to kind of deal with. I think this is probably has to do with your relationship um family life okay i think that this leaves you deeply uh deeply unhappy at times you know having people within your life at odds with each other um and you kind of having to take most of it from all sides so i feel that there's this place where you're getting into a resolve to really honor your relationship before any other anything else right maybe not romantic relationship maybe it's domestic or with your children or whatever um but i think this mom figure it's finally a time when you're like i love you i'm devoted to you but i need to have some boundaries here right um which are important it's important. It's like, um, well, you know, like with my husband, shout out to Devin Serpentero, uh, my husband Paul over there. It's amazing. If you haven't seen his readings, go check them out. Um, but with my husband and I, from the get-go, I set the boundary with anybody in my life that you don't talk badly about my, my spouse. Or, you know, at the time, too, my, my boyfriend or significant other. Um, I don't want to hear it. You know, you know, I don't talk bad. I do not talk poorly about him to other people. Um, even when I'm mad, you know, I, I will not, I don't do that. Um, because it's important to have boundaries with people. You don't come into, from the outside, you don't come into the mix and, um, you know, create chaos in the household in the relationship um or with kids i don't you don't talk badly about somebody's kids right <laughs> plenty of people do they do um but you just don't you shouldn't anyways um because ultimately you know it just ruins the relationship but there's need to be boundaries i think now that's not to say that if some they do something wrong that you don't talk about it, right? Um, or you don't give information if you feel that you need to, uh, but to just kind of idly um, go after somebody, right? So I think that it's important for you to establish those boundaries, whatever the dynamic is, um, where you don't talk about my family. I appreciate your insights and your feelings, but I don't need to hear them. Unless you have something really important to tell me, 
I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm not comfortable with it. These are the kinds of things that we, you know, we have to say. And that's with everybody in your life. You know, I think, I, anyways, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that's how it should be. Um, it saves a lot of grief within the relationship, usually. Now, I have a wonderful husband, so that helps, you know. <laughs> but, you know, uh, I think it's important to make these boundaries. And I do, I see with that, that goat up there, um, in that posture, too, of climbing the mountain towards the heart, I really do. I feel like this is like, okay, so I'm doing some difficult emotional work here. Uh, I'm trying to find my footing, but I'm going to do it. And even though there might be some fallout with this uh, maternal energy over here, yeah, I'm not going to stop because I can't live like this. I can't be in the middle of all of this drama. I don't want my significant other or my children or you know whoever it is I don't want them constantly feeling terrible because somebody else that I love is talking badly about them or bringing in this negative energy right so I do I feel like this is a time where there is uh yeah some real deep work happening um but it has to because it's going to lay kind of the foundation for how things go in the future. Also, I think it's really important that, you know, your people in your life who you are close with that you care about, uh, they know that you have their back, right? Now, you know, my husband and I, we fight sometimes, right? We don't always see eye to eye. We have different opinions about a lot of things. There are things that annoy us about each other like anybody else. But we will not drag each other around to other people. We will always be a united front. And I think that's important. If you need to talk to somebody, you get a therapist or a counselor. Or somebody who is a third party that is not involved, right? And I think that, you know, having that, having that resolve um, to honor the people that we love, it's important. And I'm not trying to say we have a, listen, I know some of you say you guys seem like you have a perfect relationship. I wish I had a relationship that was like that. Well, I hope that you do. I hope that you do, but I want you to know we're normal people. We make mistakes, okay? <laughs> I'm not trying to talk it up like we're some, you know, perfect couple. I mean, my husband, he's wonderful, and sometimes I can be pretty wonderful, uh, but we all have our things, don't we? You know, but I do feel passionately about this. I think that when we get to these points where we do set boundaries with people in our lives, and we honor the people that we love and that we want to have functional relationships with by treating them with respect and, um, you know, adhering to uh, their boundaries as well. It's amazing how much easier life gets. It really does. And I'll tell you what, they, the mother figure might protest at the beginning might even stop talking to you a little bit but if this person cares about you and can get it together they will come back without ever having anything to say anymore about that right you can talk about other things and uh you know it, i found in my life that it really does work we have to lead by example with the people that are around us we can't just expect people to know how to act. So we have to kind of, you know, we have to behave in the way that we want to be treated. And if that's not happening, then we have to tell them. Right? I don't like this. So I do. I see that this, I see the strength coming together for you. I see that heart full um you know, the, the harmony of your environment returning and, um, and things coming together. Yeah. Ultimately. 
So let's see what else do we have. It looks like we have a three and a one, 31. We have an L, we have a dog looking up. We have this real lunar energy happening. I keep seeing the dogs. I'm like, okay, so this is real. And you know what? I think the new moon is tomorrow. I forget what day it is, but I think it's on the 5th. So, uh, yeah, lunar energy. Very, very strong right now. Uh, we have the heart. And we have, it looks like a four and an owl. Four owl, maybe. Level four. Um, and that dog barking at the moon. So I kind of, I kind of almost wonder. And I feel like it's, it seems almost that there is a feeling towards almost I keep I keep thinking inebriation but it's almost it's not even just that it's like an altering of consciousness right I feel like there's this sense of um kind of getting into a place of things feeling quite distorted uh if you're not careful second guessing yourself and feeling like you're in this really kind of almost like surreal but dark place. Um, and maybe to some degree, I almost wonder if it's like you're we're going in the summer, right? Going into summer or winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Getting into this place where, you know, I don't know, maybe you are partaking a little too much and like, you know, the festivities or um, celebrating like on a, a trip or you're having some time off or whatever. And kind of maybe it, it exacerbates some of these feelings within yourself that maybe with that lunar card, maybe depression, lun lun melancholy I was gonna say lunacy that's not what I meant lunar I was <laughs> lunar um but distorted thinking and I think it is just kind of the sneaking in of like feeling self-conscious feeling paranoid um you know just kind of I don't you know I don't know um so I think definitely watch out for how you're feeling not only with whatever you're doing you know if you whatever you're consuming or anything like that um but within these emotional tasks these ordeals right this stuff can really be difficult it can make you feel um like you're just in the kind of the murkiness of it all and uh, or the chaos, right? The emotional chaos. So please make sure you're giving yourself time to decompress. Make sure that you are, you know, staying in your schedule where you can, um, getting restorative sleep, making sure that you're eating as well as you can or to whatever, you know, eating well looks like for you, of course. And, um, you know, doing some intentional movement to your level of ability and, uh, and going outside, right? I know some places it's already super hot. Uh, one of my uh, best friends, um, he, uh, he lives in Kuwait part-time, you know, whatever, like half the year. And uh, anyways, he showed me how hot it was the other day. I think it was like 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it was like 51 degrees Celsius or whatever it's centigrade. Is it centigrade over there? I don't know. Celsius. <laughs> I, I'm just a silly, um, you know, girl from, <laughs> from uh, the land of Fahrenheit, which is so annoying trying to... Um, remember you know i'm pretty close to uh to canada so i look at the canadian weather quite often as well and i'm like 
why do we use Fahrenheit? <laughs> um, so anyways, I it was very hot. So if you can't get outside, uh, yeah, definitely don't do it if it's uncomfortable. Um, but, you know, just doing something to kind of refresh yourself, okay? Um, now let's go ahead. We're going to do our little oracle cards. They're not little, actually. They're quite large. Um the last ones I was using were like a fifth the size. Uh, so we're doing the Wild Offering Oracle cards. And I'm just going to go ahead and flip through. I'm going to stop where it feels right. I don't shuffle them because I'm terrible at shuffle. It would, they would fly everywhere. My husband, uh, Paul, he is so good at shuffling. I remember when he was you know, getting ready to start doing his readings on video, um, he would be practicing constantly, like getting his shuffle down really. And I'm like, dude, how do you do that? I can't. I just, it's like the cards are flying this way, that way. They're collapsing and oh goodness. So we have change. Don't scare yourself with the next 40 steps. All you need is that one next action. You can say to love, just show me the first step and change me into who I, oh wait, change me, change me into one who can take it. Let's do it over. Don't scare yourself with the next 40 steps. All you need is that one next action. You can say to love, just show me the first step and change me into the one. <laughs> I added the the again and change me into one who can take it. Oh my goodness, my reading. I just, I've never been great at reading out loud. I read a lot, not as much as I used to currently, but I do read a lot. And <laughs> it's, I've always had just a terrible time with it, but this is true. Okay, even though I'm a Virgo and I plan months in advance for stuff, if you looked at our calendars, you would be like, what the heck, this lady. I have every day scheduled for like the next six months, basically. Um, I just, I don't know. That's just the way I am. But when I'm starting a project, I don't, I try not to, I might plan for the whole thing. I take it in little portions. This is what I can do reasonably today. And that's the only way I get things done. I'm a Virgo, but I also have ADHD. So I have to um, absolutely stay focused and do, you know, do the dang thing the way that I know I can. And, you know, that's different for each of us. So don't get bogged down by the big picture of it all. Just do it one step at a time. Okay, baby steps, baby steps. All right, Leo, I'm going to tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel so much. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. And it is free to subscribe. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I read them all and I super look forward to them. So with that, again, I'll tell you I love you. Take care of yourself. We'll talk in just a few days from now. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, I'm all mixed up on my schedule now. Um, my daughter, we had a birthday party for her. So I took like two days off or one day. I can't remember. One or two days off of recording. And now I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> um, but we'll talk in just a few days. Um, and I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night.